So my apologies that our uh, our classroom today is not allowing me to have an Elmo to project and record. Um, but hopefully I, I released the slides like Wednesday of last week. So you've had six days to prepare for this lecture. Um, so I hope you have it pulled up in front of you. Um, for the rare time, I can actually show my people at home what a slide looks like and uh, allow y'all to pause as we go since I have my printout. But anyway, um, what we're looking at today is called solubility product. It's abbreviated KSP. I'm on slide one. Uh, well, don't count the rooster slide. I'm on slide one of the, uh, the presentation. So what the um, KSP is going to take a look at, though, is a lie that I've told you. Uh, all of my, my many, many lies. Um, told my wife I loved her this morning. <laughs> she was like, she was like, I love you too. It was so, it was so stupid. Anyway, um, I'm just kidding. I do love you. Uh, da, 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 da. So the lie is, is that, um, Whenever we identify something as a precipitate, which would be something that you'd label with an S using your solubility rules, it really does have the ability to dissociate a little bit, all right? We're used to it being S solid and just staying together, but there is a little bit of dissociation there and we can calculate that through what's called solubility product. Now, if you take a look at the slide, it gives you an example of silver chloride, AgCl, breaking apart into its ions. But you're not used to it doing that because AgCl is labeled as solid. And that's what our KSP is going to be analyzing. Now, the good news is, is in order to solve these KSP problems, it's a rice table doing pretty much the exact same thing that we've been doing this whole uh, cycle. So I don't anticipate it being a big issue, I hope, uh, but AP certainly covers it. So moving on to slide two of the presentation. If you take a look at this slide, you'll notice that it gives a bunch of um, KSPs, all right? They're constant values. So it gives a bunch of compounds that you would say was solid if you use your solubility rules. And make sure you still know those. That was Sri Lanka. Y'all love Sri Lanka, I know. So who, who got the solubility rules for their project? All right, so, so y'all are going to instantly be pros. Uh, wait, did y'all just argue about it? Or y'all in a group together? No, uh, Sorry, well, she raised her hand, and then you, like, pointed at her, so I was confused. But anyway, um, no, that's tomorrow. Y'all can break up tomorrow. Um, what? No, no, because people would go for that. I can't let that happen. Um, so these are all compounds that using those solubility rules, you would say solid, all right, insoluble. You'd give it an S. But what you'll notice is they have K values, all right, which would indicate that they would dissociate a little bit. But what you'll notice about all the K values is they are all minuscule. They're tiny. One of them, uh, mercury somewhere, uh, mercury sulfide has a K of 1E to the negative 52. All right, that's the smallest number we've ever talked about in here. Um, so the K values are really small. Well, what does the small K value um, indicate? Well, that the reactants are favored. So if you look back to the prior slide where we had the solid silver chloride breaking into its parts, well, since it's going to stay solid, the reactant, you would expect a very small K value because small K values indicate re, uh, favored reactants and this thing is staying solid anyway. So no problem. Now those, uh, those uh, KSP values of course don't have to be memorized. All right, that's just a, a chart that would be given to you in order for you to survive. So with that said, let's take a look at our first problem. All right, so I'm sitting here on slide three now. All right, that'll be the problem that is using um, your silver chromate. And what you'll notice is, is that our steps in 
solving these will always be the same. So we just have to get into a rhythm. Now, our first step in doing a, a, a KSP problem is always going to be to take the compound that you would have labeled as an S and breaking it apart in a rice table. So this one gives us silver chromate. So I'm going to go Ag2CrO4, and that is solid because your solubility rules say so. But we're going to set it at equilibrium in a dissociation equation, <coughs> which is going to be 2Ag plus, <coughs> plus CrO4 minus 2. We haven't been in a situation in quite a while where the coefficients come in, uh, where coefficients appear out of subscripts. The reason we haven't seen it in a while is because it doesn't happen in acid-base interactions, and that's all we've been doing. But when I taught you these dissociation properties, all right, we represented the two silvers in this way, and that's a really big deal. So we want to make sure that we're still on our game there. All right, so it's a rice table that we're going to be running here to solve this problem. Hey, what do we know about solids in a rice table? Uh, they, can't be used. they can't be used. So here's, here's one of the, that's right, it's your one for the day, Isaac. Good job. Thank you so much. Um, so here's another one of, the, of our habits. Since we know that we're always going to be starting with a solid, a singular one, then we know that not only will this always be S, but we never have to do anything with it. So that's really nice. We're only going to be dealing with the products over here. Now, in this solution, all right, we're ultimately starting with none of these. All right? But as we show our shift, remember that the coefficient matters. So my shift here is going to be plus 2x, while this is plus x. Again, this isn't new. We just haven't done that in a while. It's been a minute. We, I mean, we did rice tables, but the, there was never, it was always a one-to-one -one ratio across the board in all of our examples. All right, so here, here we're out of that now. Um, all right, so remember, I plus C equals E. So we'll be sitting like that. And this problem, oh, I looked up there. Uh, this problem wants us to find KSP, all right? Now, there's additional information given. It gives you the molarity. All right, it gives you that equilibrium value. So these problems I think are the easiest where X is just flat out given to you. So looking at your slide, it lets you know that your uh, concentration is 6.50 E negative five. 6.50 E negative five. Isn't it 5.50? No, that's a, it's a six because there's like a slash. There's like a line stuck on there. Sorry, the cursor blinked when I captured it. Why? Why? Here, well, I'll put them on that external site. Sorry, I, I didn't know that you couldn't that you couldn't read them. It's a given value. It's in the problem. All right. So. This flat out tells us X. Well, that's really nice because now all we got to do is find KSP. Now, remember, I, this will be the only problem I have time to show an unsubstituted reaction in, but you should always be showing an unsubstituted reaction. But we know the way that these Ks look, right? It's products over reactants. But what's true about the reactants in all of these problems? They never exist. So really, it's just this times this in all KSP problems. So I'm going to go... 2x squared times x. Again, that squared is not new, just <coughs> old. Oh. All right, because it comes out. It's it, that, that coefficient double dips, so make sure you account for it. All right? But now we know x, so this becomes very simple. All right, yes, ma'am? Why did you put the square on top again? Because my coefficient is going to always double dip throughout the, ri the rice table. It's going to affect the change, and then it will always show up as when we did rate laws. We learned that coefficients always turn into. If that was 3x, would you put a, a Yes. Three yeah, it would be a 3 and a 3. Okay. Absolutely. Just whatever the coefficient is. All right. So we've got KSP here is going to be equal to 2x, all right, squared. So I'm going to double this number. 
and it comes out to be 1.3 e negative 4. All right, I didn't do the squared part yet. I'm trying to break down the steps so that you're good. And then, of course, x is just 6.50 e negative 5. Any questions on any of the work so far? No. All right. Now, just run it. See if you can find your KSP. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't square it yet. I don't, I, try, I don't want to compile too many steps into one that my video confuses people. My 1.3, uh, negative 4 is 2x. Oh, yes, it is. Way to go, Dylan. You know what? You don't have to take the final. What? What? What you know what? You're dismissed. Somebody shout. I don't have cards or dice or ways to even number you. Oh, I have, I have, I have a whole bunch of calculators in there. I brought them for you. 1.0985 e negative 12. Yeah, I get 1.10. I get 1.10 e negative 12. Just run it again. You, you click something weird. Don't forget to square it. There's a square there, guys. If you type it in exactly like that, it's going to give you 1.10 e negative 12. Well, don't get all creative on your type then. Is that it? That's the answer. That's it. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm on the slide that deals with silver chromate. All right, let's do another one. All right, guys, we are moving on to the next slide that deals with silver bromate. And if you look closely at silver bromate, it says ag, bro. I'm serious. It's ag, bro. You know where we're at? Y'all know where we're at? We're at an ag, bro. That's not my joke. I have to give that to third period. Another student said it, and I told him that it would make the video, and boom. Okay. Who was it? An idiot, obviously. Oh. Oh. Ouch. Did that make it into the video? Now, one of the things that you can see in this slide is that I give you a hint. One of the very frustrating things that can happen to you is for you to know the chemistry, but to get confused in the wording of a question, to not know what it wants you to do. All right? So one of the things that's very um, – that I notice on KSP problems – is that they use the word solubility a lot. And sometimes that might confuse you on, it says find the solubility, and you're like, hey, there's a bunch of things I could find. All right, the solubility always refers to the X that is in your rice table. All right, well, so, yeah, so in this case they are, because it says the solubility is. They're giving you that X value. Or it might say, what is the solubility? Find the X value, all right? So just a, a little hint to survive some of these. But let's do this. Um, let's type agbro because it's funnier when you write it. Agbro? Oh. Oh. So that's what the ag kid is. That kid gets it. That kid gets it. Bro, are you agbro? This is the ag commons. No way. You've never been to ag? I try never to go here. Yeah, me too. Okay. I tried never to go here. It is, but I had to get squeaky to get a room so that I wasn't, I don't know how I was going to do this out there. All right. Anyways, I barely finished last class, so y'all are going to want me to be able to keep moving. So we're going to, we're going to do our dissociation. Now, right away, I can tell that this is a nicer problem because there are no coefficients. So that's what you'll hope happens more often. Not that the coefficients are, you know, stupidly challenging, but I feel like you have to think a bit more. All right. So let's rice it up. All right. In this case, we've got um, we have nothing for starters, so my shift is going to be very easy. So now we're just oh. dealing with x. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> now, it just gives us X, right? Do you agree? It gives us the solubility, but we do have an issue. All right? Mr. Clean, I guess, and a tractor technician. See, I'm, I'm way out of my element out here. Okay. Anyway, um, hey, there's, a, there's an issue with the number. Those of y'all that can see it, the value that's given is given in grams per liter. Well, that's annoying. We don't want grams per liter for a rice table. We want moles, moles per liters, but it's an easy conversion. So they give us... Wait, back up. Oh, okay. Sorry. Continue. They give us 7.2 E negative 2 grams, but of course we want that to be moles. So it's a simple conversion. Now I'm not, we don't have time to add up the molar mass, so I added it up for us. It's 235.76. I added that up by adding ag bro together. And I almost got a tractor. And anyways, my mole number, if I run that, ends up coming to... 3.1 E negative 4. And now I have a molarity, and now I can use X. So it gave us X just in bad units, so I just made the units correct. Are you good? There was a look there. Okay. All right, so 3.1 E negative 4 is my X. So in other words, we're trying to find KSP. So KSP is going to be equal well to that number times itself, right? So ultimately it's 3.1 E negative 4 squared. Anybody want to share their KSP value? 9.61 E negative 8. 9.6 E negative 8. Yeah. I have a question, sir. And there are no units for K. Yes, sir. Oh, actually, no. Actually, I have to listen. It's not for change to listen. All right. We doing good? This is so easy. So stupid easy. All right. So what about if they don't ask it like that? What if they want you to find X, all right? We're now on this slide that's got two different problems on it, all right? If you take a look here, you'll see that it's giving you um, two different compounds that it wants you to find the solubility of. So let's go ahead and run that. Now, you'll notice that both of them would be a precipitate, of course, since we're doing KSP. So the very first step in solving either of them is going to be to dissociate it in a rice table. So the first one is barium carbonate. So let's break barium carbonate into its parts. All right, we've got good news here again, it looks like. <laughs> We've got no concentration starting it off. He knows I'm recording, so he's just going to do that. Um, hey, look, it's just plus X plus X, so that's nice. So we're just ending up with a couple X's. All right. Well, what would we need to solve for X? Well, remember, KSP is a constant value. We can go and find KSP. So go and look up barium. Those of y'all that have it, you can go and look up barium carbonate on the slide I showed earlier in this presentation. And we're going to go 2.1. I don't like that they use one sig fig, but we're going to go 2.1 E negative 9. 
Yeah, 2.0 is what I meant to say. I'm sorry. You are brilliant. Is that like, what did you get about me? It's just a good idea. Yeah, yeah. All right. So again, this number came from just a constant sheet that would have to be given to you. So the constants are KSP. Correct. Well, on that, those constants are because the, uh, everything on that list is predicted to be a precipitant. So if it is x squared, would it be with the actual x value being the square root of that? Yeah. So then solve algebraically, take the square root to solve. Wait. So is it, if you're doing that, is when you get the number off the well, in this case, if this had coefficients, it would be a little more tricky. Right. But if there's no coefficients, then yes, it would be x squared. Okay. But if this was a 2 and this was a 3, then this is going to be very funky. Question. Yes. Can you go back to that problem. Where did you get 2.0e negative 9? 2.0e negative 9 is a constant value found on a chart. So you said 2 okay. It's on this page. It's, it's right here. Annalise, right there. Yeah, no, I knew okay. that, but okay. I looked it up for barium carbonate. Got you, got you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're running to two sig figs. So I get about, what, 4.5e negative 5? All right, hey, you've got units this time, though. All right, you found x this time, so it's a molarity. Be aware of that. Now, the other one I keep pointing at this rooster, and I hate it. The other problem is a bit trickier. So it's not trickier. It's just going to say, do you remember algebra? So let's take a look. <laughs> oh, yes. So like, how did you get that 4.5e to the negative 5? I took the square root. It, it, I had a value equals x oh, squared. Okay, so if I take the square root, it gives me x. Okay. Let's do silver sulfide. So, AG2S is predicted to be solid, which means we can do a KSP on it. So let's break him apart into his dissociated form, which is going to be 2AG plus plus S negative 2. Yes, well, because it, it makes the, it's a balanced reaction is the way to look at it. I have two AGs here, so I need two AGs there. All right. So um, we've got a solid, so who cares? We've got nothing of these before this happens. All right. My shift is going to be 2x and x that we're dealing with here. All right. That's a shift up, so it's 2x and x. All right. Again, we want to find solubility, which is the X. So we can go and find KSP on a published table to do that. So go and look up AG2S, and it's, we're going to say 1.0 E negative 49. Are we getting that on the final then? Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. There's the given KSP. Kind of given, I just had to go look it up on a table. Now here's where you got to be careful. Remember, it's supposed to be products over reactants, but there are no reactants. That's why it's just doing the products. All right? But this is going to be 2x squared times x. And here's where the algebra lives. Did you survive algebra? So really, this is two. This is two x times two x. So this would be two x times two x times x. It would be four x cubed. All right? So, careful there. I mean, the 2 times 2 gives you 4, and x times x times x is x cubed. Now you just need to simplify. So I'm going to divide by 4 to get the x cubed by itself. 
All right? When I do that, I'm going to go 1 e negative 49 divided by 4 gives me 2.5 e negative 50. I'm going to move over here. 2.5 e negative 50 equals x cubed. Ask. Go. Yeah, go again. You, you hit something weird. Do you know how to find a cube root on your calculator? Now, if you don't have my calculator, I might not be helpful. But if you type into Google how to find cube root on the TI I'm terrible, it'll tell you. All right? But if you've got mine, what you're going to do is you're going to go math. And four options down is the cube root. It's the three with the square root sign. And now it's awaiting this number. 2.5 e negative 50 is going to have an answer of approximately 2.9 e negative 17. All right, only two more problems to do to show a couple other things that can take place. If the solid, the precipitate, is being added to something that is not water, then there's the ability to have an initial concentration of one of the uh, ions. In all of our problems so far, we've had zero, zero, right? But look at the wording of the next slide. What I see is that it's putting barium carbonate into a solution of barium nitrate. Therefore, there was already some barium there. But this isn't harder, it's just a little a teeny tiny twist. So in this problem, the barium carbonate, you could verify, is predicted to be solid. It is a precipitate, all right? The nitrate would never be predicted to be solid because nitrates are always soluble, as you know. You do though. All right, so let's do this yet again. Now here's where it's different. This time there is a concentration of one of these items. Which one did we already have a little bit of? The barium. The barium. Yeah, because it was added to barium nitrate, but your number's just given to you. There's 0.5 molar of this guy, and there was no carbonate starting. Now there is a very good thing that's going to happen here. It's different. A lot of y'all don't like different but you're going to like it. Now, of course, this would be plus x and plus x because there are no coefficients. So my e row would be <laughs> I'm everybody's e row. <laughs> no, so you're saying zero. No. Oh, I thought it sounded like hero. No. I was thinking like zero. I thought it was yeah, I thought it was nasty. Listen, you're going to like this cuz this would be quadratic and I'm not going to let it be yes. 0.5 plus that. It, this plus this is this. Oh, okay. Oh, because zero plus two. Listen, in a KSP problem, if you have X plus anything in an E row, you get to trump X. Listen again. If at any time in a KSP problem, you have something being added to X, you can trump X. The reason being is that in these problems, x is so small 
that it's not going to affect the 0.5 enough for you to do a quadratic problem. The AP test uh, graders don't mind you doing this, but I would mention before you trumpet or, or as you trumpet, I would write X is negligible. All right, that's a good chemistry word. We used it when we talked about noble gases, um, or I'm sorry, about the mass of electrons. But anyways, so listen to me say it one more time. If in a KSP problem, in the E row, you've got a number plus X, you can just trump X because it's going to just be that number due to X being so incredibly small in these problems. And that's great news because now the rest of this is very simple. If you go and look up barium carbonate on your chart, you'll find that he has a KSP of 2.0 E negative 9. All right, so this is KSP of him, and now it's just 0.5 times X. Don't have to do a solver, we just have to divide. And I get about 4E negative 9. I get about 4E negative 9. Yes. Yeah, two sig figs. My, my problems are, aren't going to do what that um, constant values you're doing. AP will never have you write your answer in one sig fig. They never do that. How are we feeling? You want to do one more from a 1997 released FRQ? What? I just, yes, it's still the same. I mean, not all of it, but I wouldn't pull problems that they can't ask you. All right, guys, last problem. Of, and this is the last problem until January. That's kind of nice. All right, y'all, here we go. So I'm looking at the very last slide, and what it does is it's going to layer in some old concepts, which is, of course, what the FRQs like to do. So what this question is going to do is it's going to pull from dilutions, which was in unit two. It's going to pull a Q value, which was in unit four. Do you remember Q, the reaction quotient? It was fake K. The reason that we ever found a Q, look here, was when we weren't sure which direction it was going to shift. It was when we had values for everything in the I row. And whenever that happened, we had to find Q, compare it to K, and then we would know whether it was going to shift right or left in the equilibrium. So let's start at the beginning, though, um, because it, it, it's going to pull from one more area, which is uh, chemistry one. It's going to mix calcium chloride with sodium sulfate. Now, we haven't done a lot of reaction predictions just because it's so pre-AP, but it says right with me that calcium chloride is going to react with sodium sulfate. All right, well, that's just a regular precipitation reaction. What it wants to know is we're going to evaluate whether or not a precipitate will form. That's what the question asks. Hang on to it. It says, will a precipitate form? Guys, we don't have to do math to figure out if a precipitate will form, right? We just have to know our solubility rules. All right, so let's, let's just answer that question first. It says, will a precipitate form? Okay, well, ion swap. I'm going to switch calcium and sodium and end up with sodium chloride and calcium sulfate. All right, all I did was swap the cations of each reactant. And what you'll see if you apply your solubility rules is sodium chloride is aqueous and calcium sulfate is not. Which means we've answered, the, it says, will it precipitate form? Yep, it formed. But there's a, those of y'all that have the slides, what does it say right after that question? 
It says explain. What's your question before we explain? Oh, I was just going to ask, are you, or for all the problems that are going to be on the test, will there always be like a constant to them, like they're not, like they're always going to be on that list? Yes. Unless you're finding it. Because the first two problems we did today, you calculated KSP. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, will a precipitate form? Yes. Why? Well, let's look at the precipitate. Let's prove that it will stay in solid form. So here we go. I'm going to take the calcium sulfate and do exactly what we've been doing all period. He's a solid. So this is how you would analyze something that's going to stay solid. So I'm going to break him up into calcium and sulfate. We're going to get rid of that dude. But now comes one of the little digs from a previous unit. We don't have the molarities of the calcium and sulfate from the original equation because I pointed at the rooster again, because it gave you a dilution problem. It said you have this, this molarity of this volume mixed with this molarity of this volume, which should always point you towards M1V1 equals M2V2. All right? So what I'm going to do then is build a tractor, is if I take a look at the problem, it says, all right, well, you had 40, uh, for, the, for, the cal for the calcium chloride, all right, it says you had 45 mils, and I'm going to multiply that times a given molarity that's a four, of 0.015 molar. That was my starting, all right? And then what's my final volume? Does the yellow can see it? 100 mils. It's 50. It says you're mixing 45 mils with 55 mils. That's 100 mils. All right? And if we solve for X, we will then have the molarity of the calcium and the chlorine ions, which really matters for where we're at in our problem. Now, it also tells you that the other reactant, which was the sodium sulfate, all right, the sodium sulfate um, started with an amount of 55 mils. We just said that, 55 mils. But his starting molarity was 0.01. All right. The ending volume is still 100, of course, 45 plus 55. And by solving these, it will give you the molarity of everything in the solution that you created. But I've already done it. So if you solve, you're going to get a calcium value of 0.0068. Go ahead and verify. Don't, don't just listen to me. I'm a huge liar sometimes. All right, 0 0.0068 here and 0 0.0055 here. Yeah, that's molarity, which is the only thing that can go in the I row of our table. Hey, look, no coefficient, so it's plus x and plus x. But what's going to happen here? What's going to happen in the E row? We get to trump both of them, right? Because any time in an SP, in a KSP, that you are adding an X to a value, you get to get rid of the X. Wait, we're still proving, right? Yeah, yeah. All we're doing is, yeah, we already know there's a precipitate. He is a precipitate. And here's the final step on proving. All right, yes. Because that is sulfate charge. If you look here, then the, the reason that, that no sub... Oh, 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 I see. I see what you're saying. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, what? Yeah. Now... Here's why we do Q, all right? Whenever we had values, starting uh, concentrations of everything we were looking at was when we would find a Q. But if you remember, Q is the same as K, products over reactants, all right? There are no reactants. So it's just going to be Q equals 0.0068 times 
0.0055. All right, it's the same stuff that we've done for every problem. And when you run that, you're going to get a Q value of 3.7 E negative 5. Now, Q is fake K. No, because remember, we're not really looking for a number. We just want to prove that he is going to stay solid. Now, if you go and look up calcium sulfate's KSP value, you'll see that it's 3 E negative 5. And here's where we get to prove it, all right? We already knew it was solid because we know our solubility rules. But when you compare the Q to the KSP, what do you notice? Well, it's, it's almost always different. But which one is larger? Q. If Q, and th this is, you memorize this once upon a time. If Q is larger than K, the reactants are favored. And what is true if the reactants are favored here? It'll be solid. We've proven the solubility rules by doing this. You're dismissed. Yeah. See you later. Well, we know it's a Let's go to America, you guys. Q and not K. The way that you know you're solving for Q is if you have initial concentrations of everything that's in the equilibrium.